welcome back into the shop you guys I hope you're all doing well today this video is going to be the second part in building a walnut credenza and I am super pleased because first thing we're going to be getting going on is the top and this is pretty fun because it's going to be over an inch thick of solid walnut so this is the stock that we're going to be working with this is a six quarter a piece of walnut and I have a handful of these boards picked out We're gonna actually take this down to about five quarters and as you can see this is already surfaced However, it isn't exactly flat and that's why I want to first run them on the jointer and the planer So to also give me a hand on the milling because these pieces are over eight feet long I don't want these to sag as they come off of the jointer So this roller is gonna be nice and handy with keeping it nice and level I just got a fresh new coat of wax on the jointer yesterday, so we're gonna go ahead and put this thing to work So I now have all four pieces down to their final size. Here's an interesting thing that I'm gonna be doing here that might help you on your projects. So our top at the moment is just over 22 inches, as you can see, about 22 and a half. And this needs to be down to 21 inches. So we have over an inch to work with. Because this is such a large top and it's really wide, I'm actually gonna be doing a technique on the jointer that I've seen some other guys do that is gonna be really helpful. And what this kind of involves is on the jointer, the fence, you know, this is set at 90 degrees most of the time. However, it isn't exactly 100% always perfect. And the way you can cancel out this error is by milling one board against the fence like this, and then the opposing board milling it in the opposite direction. That way, that will actually cancel out in the middle and still make your board nice and flat. And that's kind of the idea that I'm going with. So what I'll first need to do here is pick the top side of each board which I want. What I'll then do is actually label on each board the inside and then the outside. This whole technique, I know I'm kind of just briefing over, but if you want to see an in-depth video on that, I will leave a link up on the top of the video where you can watch it in depth and actually learn exactly what I'm doing. So I'm now going to go ahead and flip these boards around and get them in the order that I like. Here's what the top looks like on the case. It's looking really good now. Cut to its final size. As you saw, I just got the top all sanded down nice and flat. Now, the last thing I wanna do here on the top before I do the mortises is actually going to be doing a roundover on the edges. Doing a nice roundover on the top will do two things. Number one, it'll be a little bit safer in that these sharp corners right now are kind of dangerous in that if you walk into them, that that's going to be painful. And then number two is that I think it'll actually look a lot nicer because this actually has a one inch overhang. And if that were to be rounded all the way over, I think that would also give it a nice look as well. So let's grab a round over bit here and see what we can do. And the bit I'm using is a 3 8 round over.
This is really starting to come together, you guys. So the next step is going to be working on the cabinet doors right here. Now, I haven't actually touched these parts since I milled them, and that is because when I put the top on, I was worried that that might adjust some of these measurements, so I didn't want to do it yet. But now, we're ready to go, and you can see I have one of the styles just kind of placed in here. The rough cuts that I did for all of the rails and styles doesn't account for the gap that's actually going to be there in the final piece. So what I need to do is actually take off maybe 3 30 seconds, maybe an eighth of an inch. So what I will first do is take that off of all the parts right here. The reason why I can't move these is because each piece is oriented exactly how it's going to be in the cabinet because all of the grain is going to match. I'm going to take this over to the miter saw and cut all the parts. So these styles right here are 19 and 3 quarters of an inch in length and I have my shims right here that I'll be using to actually fit the doors so what I can first do is take one of the shims and put this in between the stop block and the piece and then take off that distance off of the work piece and then when I flip it over I can take a second shim put that in and then take off another shims width of material and what this will do is take off 3 30 seconds of an inch on either side and it will stay grain matched and centered in that opening so I got all four of the doors all dominoed together. Now the next step here is gonna be working on the panel that goes inside. Now rather than doing solid walnut raised panels because I would have taken a lot more material, instead I'm going to be using half inch plywood that I'm going to cut a rabbit into to bring it down to a quarter inch that will fit into a groove going inside of here. And I think that would give it a really nice look and also the plywood would be pretty simple to do. So before I break into the half inch walnut plywood, I'm first gonna set up the router table with the quarter inch bit to cut all the grooves. Alright, so the drawer slides that I'm using on this project here are going to be the Blum soft closed drawer slides that I've used on several other projects. Because our drawer is going to be inset, I got the other a little bit more expensive clips that have a depth adjustment and also the side to side adjustment. And that drawer front is going to be in here just like this with an equal reveal going all the way around. And as you can see, it is just the, the drawer front right now. And here's a little bit closer look at these clips for the Blum slides. Now, if you're doing inset, these are probably the best ones that you could use. They do cost a little bit more money, but they are better and they give you more adjustments. However, if you're doing overlay or something more simple, you can just get the cheaper ones. So we can take our slides and place these back here. And that kind of gives us an idea of the size of our drawer and also how this is actually going to function. And I have some pieces left over of some hard rock maple that is going to be perfect for this. So let's go ahead and make a drawer box with these pieces.
our drawer box now taking shape, as you can see. And I have the perfect panel that is going to be for the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to size. Check this out. Guys, that is a perfect drawer. Don't even see the hinges, not the hinges, the, the drawer slides on the side, completely seamless. And this is pretty much what this whole thing is gonna look like when it's done. I mean, obviously the handles are gonna go on, but the doors are on, the, the drawers in. I mean, this thing's starting to come together really, really well. Honestly, blue tape is like the best thing ever for furniture makers and stuff like this. You can see you can make, you know, little sticky things like that little pull tabs like this for drawers like blue tape use it on your projects I'm telling you all right so what I'm thinking now of doing is on the doors here they don't actually have a stop to hold them in place that's kind of why I had the blue tape here in the first place so what I'm actually going to be using here are small little magnets I think these are like maybe 3 8 in size and there's gonna be one on the door here and then one up underneath and you can probably figure that out but they're gonna stick in there just like that and hold the door in. So there's that magnet right there and our door can close just like that and it holds it in. It's not a ton of, you know, force, but it just holds it nice and keeps the door from, you know, swinging out. You can buy a pack of like 20 magnets and save a whole bunch of money instead of buying those clips for each door. So I'd highly recommend doing that. There are actually several parts of this project that included that half inch walnut plywood, including the, the panels here, the bottom, and also the back. Now I actually have a whole, almost a full sheet left right here. And this is actually going to be what I use to make the shelves. And I only need two shelves in here, one right about there and then one over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down and I'll also have some scraps for some other projects in the future, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut those two pieces out for the shelves right now. surprise here we have a lovely custom cut piece of glass that is gonna go right in the middle Whew. man that is awesome Now, as useful as this blue tape is for handles, we need to actually put on the real handles. I picked out these pretty cool looking black handles that have a pretty nice profile to them and they'll match up pretty nicely with the, the black hinges on the side. So I have four of these which are three and a quarter in length and then one more that is I think just over five inches and this one will be for the drawer in the middle. now time for the most rewarding part of this project and that is going to be applying this lovely finish to all of this gorgeous walnut so here's the deal you can always and I've 
done this always in the past, apply a nice durable coat of like a polyurethane or like a varnish or something to your furniture. Now, I kind of feel like that's a little bit more work than what it's actually worth. The specific product I'm going to be applying here is called Tried and True. This is a mixture of, I believe, linseed oil and beeswax. This is going to work very well, hopefully. And not only is it food safe, but it also doesn't require a respirator or gloves. Also, if anything ever gets damaged or dinged or messed up, you can always sand it down and reapply and do like touch up work. This isn't as durable as like maybe a varnish or something like that, but I think the pros of this definitely outweigh the cons. Now I haven't ever used this before, but hopefully after this, I can say that I've tried it. And also because I feel like I just kind of have to say it, no, this is not sponsored by Tried and True or any other company. This is just something I'm pretty excited to try out. Actually worked out pretty well and also we have the drawer right here two of the doors here the shelves and then two other doors right there and this stuff is wrapped up really nice and good and now time for the shots that you've all been waiting for just after wrapping this whole thing up in the shop I then loaded it up in the truck took it over to the clients home and delivered it I think I may be onto something with this oil wax finish after applying it to this cabinet and realizing just how pretty it looks especially on this walnut i can't help but think that in the future most of the pieces of furniture i'll do are probably going to actually have a natural finish on it so with that said i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and this series be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications that way when i post my next video here on the channel you get notified and you can go and watch that that's all i have for you guys for today take care and i'll see you in the next one